Hey everyone, my name is Sebastian, and I'm the co-VP of Engineering and Cardano Project Manager at Mergo, one of the companies behind the Cardano project, and also the company behind the Uroi Wallet. So in this video, I want to go over the Uroi Wallet, what it is, what we've done so far, what we're working on now, and what we plan to do for the future, and how all that ties into the Ergo project. So first of all, what is Uroi? So obviously not everybody is familiar with it, but Uroi is a cryptocurrency wallet. Notably, it's a cryptocurrency wallet that only supports two currencies, Cardano and Ergo. And the reason for this is that originally this was a Cardano only project. We want to expand to a second cryptocurrency. And we looked at all the cryptocurrencies out there and which one made the most sense. And because Ergo had a close relationship with Cardano, and also because it shared some similarities, for example, in the way that smart contracts work, we thought this made the most sense for our partnership. And one of the ways we differentiate our products from other wallets is that instead of supporting many, many cryptocurrencies with a very small support for each one, we instead want to support a small number of cryptocurrencies. We want to support each one very well, right? So for example, you could find a wallet that supports Cardano and a hundred other cryptocurrencies, but the only thing you can do with this wallet is send ADA or receive ADA. But instead with the Euro extension, not only can you send and receive ADA, we also have a beautiful dashboard to manage your staking, you can delegate the stake pools, you can register for the Cardano treasury system and so on. So for Ergo, we plan to have the same thing where we don't just provide Ergo sending and receiving, but also a very deep, full integration with all the functionality that Ergo provides. So where can you get the Euro extension? Right now it's available. Um, in two ways. One is a Euro extension, so a browser extension, and the other one is a mobile application. For the browser extension, we support Firefox, Chrome, and Edge. And then for mobile, we support Android and iOS. So if you haven't heard of Euro, you might be interested in the history of this project. So let's talk a bit about what we've done so far. So the Euro wallet was created in 2018 as a browser extension. And originally it was just a browser extension, and we want to see how popular it would get. And it turns out people really liked the software we wrote. They really liked the Euro extension. And so in January 2019, we also launched a mobile application. Now these projects are separate, but similar in design and share some code. But unfortunately, the technology at the time was not good enough for us to make both of them the exact same application. Uh, and so there is sometimes a delay. For example, the Euro extension right now has Ergo support but Uroi Mobile does not have Ergo support yet, and it's something that we're actively working on. But so speaking of Ergo support, in October 2020, we released Ergo support for the Uroi extension. Now, the Ergo support was done through a library called Ergo TypeScript, which is a library that was created for CoinBarn that allowed you to add Ergo support for light wallets. Now, the problem with this library is that it didn't have support for smart contracts, and so it really only supported the basic we needed for uh, the most basic integration to Yoroi. So similarly, we didn't have support for smart contracts and we didn't have support for uh, multi-asset transactions, uh, just to keep it simple for the first release. Now let's look at the present. So the present, we now have a version of Yoroi with an update in 2020, where we now support multi-assets. So you can receive custom tokens and send custom tokens. And we also support the new library called Sigma Rust. So Sigma Rust is a more uh, complicated, but also much uh, stronger library for Ergo support, which allows us to have stuff like uh, smart contract support. And because it's written in Rust, which is a programming language that works well in, in many scenarios, we can also run this inside the browser extension and inside Uroi Mobile. And so this is a big update for us because uh, as of this update of January, not only do we support multi-asset, which is um, very useful for just smart contracts in general, because many smart contracts use custom tokens. It's also important because the use of Sigma Rust enables us to now have a much deeper integration with smart contracts inside our platform. So uh, just from this explanation, you may not have a clear idea of exactly how Uroi works. And so here I'm going to just show you Uroi very briefly so you have a good idea of how Ergo is integrated into the Uroi extension.
All right, so first I'm gonna show you how to get the Yudo extension. So first you go to yudoiwallet.com and it will look something like this. And in this drop down, you will be able to find the Chrome extension. So if you click on that, you'll be brought to our Chrome Web Store page. You can see this is the real version of Yudoi because it's uploaded by us. And also you can tell from the user count and the number of ratings that this is kind of hard to fake. Now, once you've added this extension to your Chrome or Brave or Edge browser, you'll get a, a icon at the top right of your browser. And when you press it, you'll see the Yudo extension appear. Okay, once you've got the Yudo extension, you'll go to Restore Wallet and select Ergo Wallet. From the Ergo Wallet, you'll be able to choose the number of words you want for your recovery phrase. And so I'll pick 12 for my wallet. Now I'm just gonna hide this part out so you don't see what I type in. Uh, but here you would enter your own recovery phrase, um, but if you don't have one, you can also, you know, select the create wallet and create your own Ergo wallet. All right, there you go. I've restored my Ergo wallet. And you can see here we have a checksum that represents your private key. Okay, so this way, if you type in the wrong recovery phrase, you will get a different checksum. And so you'll know you typed in the wrong thing. So this is a special feature we have in the Udo extension because we often have people messaging us saying, I type in my recovery phrase and I get an empty balance. And now we can tell them, if you type your recovery phrase, you should get a checksum. Does your checksum match what you have before? And so whenever you use your Udo, be sure to write down your checksum and keep it somewhere because if you get the wrong recovery phrase, you'll be easily be able to tell because the checksum will be different. So now let's restore the wallet. And here's our Ergo wallet. So you can see that it'll take some time to pull up the transaction history. Um, but once you've got that up and running, you should be able to see, sorry, I'm running a test build so you get a, see an error at the top. Uh, once you've got the wallet running, you should be able to see your transaction history, uh, which will show you all the transactions that you have in your wallet. Saying, for example, here's a transaction that contained three boxes. Um, all of them were, uh, pay to public key types, and then they got sent to other addresses. You can see um, some of these boxes contain just erg, and some of these boxes contain a token. This example token in this case is called test. Um, so if you click on these links, you'll be able to go to the Ergo um, Explorer and find out more information. Um, but from here, you can also see there's a receipt page you can see which addresses you have and how much balance is in there. Um, and you can also generate more addresses if you need more addresses for some reason. And now these are all um, pay to public key address types and we don't currently support any other address type uh, through the receive page, but that should be all you, you really need. Now that you've done this, you can also send your ERG to other people. So we have a drop down for you to pick the asset you want to send. So you can either send ergs or you can send whatever custom assets you have so if you want to send erg you just pick an address enter it in and then you can send any amount you want or you can send the full balance so once you um send want to send some erg you'll be able to see a confirmation page that shows you where you're going to send it to and how much you're going to send now, if you want to send tokens, for example, if I want to send my test tokens to somebody, you'll notice that the amount you're sending is just the test amount, right? So because I have, you know, a thousand test tokens, I can send, for example, a hundred of them, right? And the only amount of herbs that will be spent is the 0 0.0011 amount. Okay. And if I press the confirmation page, you can see I'm paying um, small amount of herb, which is the minimum you need to have inside an, a box, plus a fee, which is the minimum fee required, and then the test tokens. And obviously you can send all of your test tokens if you want to send them all somewhere too. Now, um, the thing is that you can't send multiple tokens at once, and you can't send tokens with a custom amount of ergs. They're definitely use cases, for these situations we've we tried it out and we found that the user experience for this is really tricky like people don't want to select 
10 different tokens or drop down and then make sure they get all the right amounts. It's just not a great user experience. So for these cases where you want to send multiple different tokens in some specific way, we suggest that this is all, this should, should all be handled through some sort of DAP. If there's a use case for this that is really common, uh, we could provide a advanced view for trans transaction sending that allows this functionality. But we try and keep things simple to start with. And if people really need the extra complexity, then we kind of take the extra step. So this has been a short introduction of the Ergo features we support for the Udo extension. And once we have Udo mobile support, we'll also support a similar feature set. All right, so now let's talk about the future of Udoi. So now that you've seen our amazing stack, um, let's, let's talk about even more exciting stuff what's happening in the future. So there's three main things that we want to work on. One of them is Udoi mobile support. So as I mentioned, right now we have support in Udoi extension, but not Udoi mobile yet. We have a prototype integration of Sigma Rust into our mobile code base, but it's gonna take us more time to add the rest of the missing functionality. We're also working on a stablecoin integration into Uroi. And so you'll hear more about that in other talks during the Ergo Summit. And also we want to have a dApp connector. That means that we want uh, dApps to be able to communicate with your wallet through the Uroi extension. And to give you more information about exactly how uh, we're gonna provide dApp support, I have a video by one of our engineers called Rob, who's gonna go into more detail about the work we've done so far. Hi, I'm Rob, a research and development engineer at Emergo, and today I'm going to be quickly going over how we've been integrating Uroi with Ergo-based dApps. First of all, communication. There needs to be some way for um, dApps to communicate with the wallet, and for this we're using EIP-12, which is uh, an Ergo improvement proposal that aims to standardize this kind of communication. This is very similar to how Web3 can work to uh, join together an Ethereum-based dApp to a uh, user's uh, Ethereum wallet, such as MetaMask. Essentially, the API entry point request read access here will be exposed to web pages, and dApps can then choose to call this entry point, and this will request that the user give them access to their wallet, to their wallet read-only access, and if the user accepts, then they are given the the rest of the API. Among this, we have um, get ETXOs. This get we can return the user's unspent boxes, get balance, get gets the user's wallet balance, get information about the used and unused addresses, and also potentially we can request that the user sign a transaction. This would be something the user would also have to additionally consent to, not just something given to all websites. We also have the ability to sign part of a transaction for more complicated use cases where the user might only own some of the inputs. You can sign generic data and uh, also uh, for ease of use this allows us to submit a transaction through the wallet so that the dApp doesn't necessarily have to host their own ergo full node if the rest of their requirements are quite simple. Alright now I'm going to demonstrate this with a locally hosted dApp. All right, so we've navigated the DAP, and as we see, we have a connect confirmation box. We can select which wallet, which wallet we want to expose to um, the DAP. All of this UI is just temporary because we've just been focusing on getting the back end and the core communication systems done first before we finalize the UI. All right, so now that we've connected, this is what we see. This is a very simple DAP that I'm just using for testing here. It essentially aims to allow the user to donate a specific amount of ergs to a hard-coded address in the dApp. Okay, so let's just uh, choose a specific amount, and then we click Send here. The wallet, in order to do this, it first called Get Balance to get the balance to the user, and afterwards to construct the transaction, it had to get the unspent boxes to know which uh, boxes that the user owns that we can use for this transaction. And using that, it constructed a transaction. This transaction is shown here using this temporary UI. As we can see, we have the donation we want. We have the rest coming back as a change, a change output. 
and then the Fiat. But in this box appeared because the DAP requested the user sign the transaction. This is entirely inside the wallet. The DAP has no control over this. It just requests that the user sign it, and if they don't want to, nothing happens. All right, this is a an additional an additional security uh, layer we have. The user must enter in their spending password to sign any transaction through the connector. All right, so now that we've signed that, it gives them back the tra the signed transaction, and then the DAP then chooses to try and submit the transaction through the wallet, and this gives them back a transaction ID, and we can now track that, which potentially could already be in the um, node's mempool already. Let's see. Not yet. Okay, we'll just wait a little bit more. And some additional things to note. This is not going to be directly a part of Uroi itself. We chose this mostly for privacy and security considerations. As we see, if we open up our extensions, we have two extensions installed. We have the regular Uroi. Notice that it says no access needed. It does not need to see and change information on any website. We want it to maintain that. And since the, in order to do this kind of communication, we need to expose this, uh, expose this API to web pages for dApps to interact with. We decided to put this in a separate extension. And you know, it's there, full access. It can see, it can see and change information on the site, which it needs to expose the API. This will be true for any kind of web-based um, API. And. Um, this also allows us to be more modular as well, because we could be additionally planned later on in the future to implement this for also for Gardan or something else. And also as just another uh, privacy um, feature as well. While the user has to consent to any kind of uh, ac any kind of access to the wallet, you can refuse any sites having access. This also allows users, if they have your installed, to not let any website know that they have some kind of uh, wallet installed by just not installing the connector. So if you don't need this functionality, you don't need to be exposing that to anything. Okay, let's try and refresh this again. Look, it's already been accepted. We have the transaction that we just sent for this amount that shows up here. It's already been accepted by um, it's already been accepted by the other ergo nodes in the main network in Minnet. So as you see, we have this entire thing functioning fully. We just have to do the, a the a UI.